Okay, finally with our contingency tables, we're going to talk a little bit about how can we determine if two events are independent from one another. Okay, so as you can see, I added an additional contingency table down here. We're going to use that one in just a second. All right, so let's start off with our contingency of what is the probability that you're happy given that you have eaten lunch. Okay, so we know that this happy given lunch, and from the previous video, uh, we were able to determine that given that you've eaten lunch, the probability that you're happy is 60 divided by 65. Okay, so we have that probability. But what we really want to know is are, are events happy and lunch independent? Okay, well from our previous video we know that there's an equation that, that we can use and it's the probability of A given B is independent if and only if the following is true. This probability equals the probability of A. So, and this is independent if and only if true. All right, so you see that if with two F's in mathematics that stands for if and only if. So if this statement is true, probability of A given the probability of B equals the probability of A, then the events are independent. Okay, so we need to know is does this probability, that given statement, equal the probability of happy? That's our big question. All right, well that's pretty easy to check. We can just say, okay, what's the probability of being happy here? And it's 80 divided by 100. All right, now the question is, are, are those two exactly the same? And the answer is no, they're not. If you want to type them into a calculator, uh, you, can, you can see uh, what they exactly are. But those probabilities are not equal. Therefore, we'll say happy and lunch are dependent because We'll do this 60 over 65 is not equal to 80 over 100. So they're dependent. The only way for them to be independent is if these two were exactly equal to one another. Um, and now there is some in like in practicality, sometimes if those get really, really close, they're not exactly the same. But since it's like real world data, if they're really close, we'll say that, that they are independent. Um, but for this class, we're going to go by, by strict whether or not they equal each other. Okay, so what I wanted to give you is, okay, well, let's see an example where they are independent. And that's why I did this like happy and sad uh, with dog and cats. Okay, so with this one, what we're going to look at is Uh, the probability of being happy given we know that you own a dog. Okay, so for this to be independent, this is going to have to equal the probability of being happy. If we can show that those two are the same, then we're golden. Thumbs up. Okay, so let's figure this out. So down here, the probability of being happy, if we go all the way over, there were 75 out of the 100 people who responded as being happy. So we've got 75 over 100. And what's the probability if you're happy given that you own a dog? Okay, well, let's look at this. Uh, we know that the probability of happy intersect dog, remember that's how we do, we need to look at this. This would be probability happy 
intersect dog divided by the probability of dog. Okay, remember this is a check. We're checking this. 75 over 100. Okay, happy intersect dog. Happy intersect dog, 30 out of the 100. Okay, 30 divided by 100. Now we need to divide by the probability of owning a dog in this one, which was 60 out of 100. Sorry, not 60. Probability of owning the dog, 40 out of the 100. 40 divided by 100. So this is still 75 over 100. And this is now going to be 30 over 100 multiplied by 100 divided by 40. Okay, let's move this up. Take this whole thing up here. And we now see that we can cancel out those 100s. Now we've got 30 out of 40 is equal to 75 over 100. And if we simplify this down, 0.75 is equal to 0.75. So in this case, happy and dog are independent. Okay, so happy and dog are in fact independent. And the way that we're able to show that is because we went through all the steps, checked to see if the happy given dog was equal to the probability of being happy. Because those two probabilities were the same, we were indeed able to conclude that these guys are independent from one another. Okay, so I'm going to erase just a little bit, and I want to put in one um, kind of cautionary uh, tale. And the piece that I want you to be careful of that many people get wrong is that if things are mutually exclusive, that they are somehow automatically independent. And that is just not true. All right, so let me get me just a little bit of a window and I'll show you this. Okay, so let's consider some mutually exclusive events. So we know that in this contingency table, eating lunch and not eating lunch are mutually exclusive. You couldn't respond as both you ate lunch and you did not eat lunch. Okay, so I want to know if lunch we know that lunch and no lunch are mutually exclusive. We'll shorten that down to ME. They're mutually exclusive. We now want to know, are they independent? OK, well, in order for us to determine independence, we need to do this check right here. If A given B is equal to the probability of A. All right, so we'll have lunch. We'll have this guy be our A, and we'll have no lunch be our B. OK, so the first one is this conditional probability. Remember, when we do our conditional probabilities, uh, we need to find, we'll do the probability of lunch intersect no lunch uh, divided by the probability of lunch. OK. And that has got to be equal to the probability, oh, sorry, put that in the wrong one. This should be no lunch in the denominator. No lunch. And this is going to be, this has to equal the probability of lunch. Okay, well, let's do the math. So the intersection of the probability of lunch intersect no lunch, well, no lunch and lunch don't intersect each other. They're mutually exclusive. So this guy is going to be 0 divided by the probability of no lunch, which is 35 over 100. Uh, but since 0 is in the numerator, it just drops out to being 0. Okay, The probability of lunch is 65 over 100. 65 divided by 100. And so this is saying that 0 equals 60 
5 out of 100, which is not true. So because those two are not equal to, those mutually exclusive events are not independent from one another. They are, in fact, dependent upon one another. So in almost every situation, not all situations, but in almost every situation, mutually exclusive events are, in fact, um, dependent events. There is one caveat, and, but it's kind of weird. If we had a row in here that was zeros, so like, for example, let's say that instead of being, um, we'll put in another row here. So lunch, no lunch, and we'll talk about dinner, but maybe like nobody ate dinner at all. Okay, so what I'd have to do, yeah, let me erase this and I'll put in one more row. So that would be, okay. Zero, zero, zero. And then now let me put in my totals again. Okay, and we're at 80, 20, and 100. Okay, so here is a weird scenario where you will have mutually exclusive events that are independent. Okay, how? Well, instead of talking about lunch and no lunch, let's talk about, um, yeah, let's talk about, we'll have this guy, we'll have A be dinner and B be lunch. Okay, let's put that up here. Dinner and lunch. Okay, great, we can do this. So here we go. Let's follow the exact same rules that we had before. And we'll walk through and see how these guys are, in fact, independent events. Let me erase those guys. Give me just a second. Okay, so here we're going to have probability of dinner intersect lunch divided by the probability of lunch. Yep, and we, we need that to be the probability of dinner. All right, let's do this. So probability of dinner intersect lunch. Well, we already know that dinner and lunch they're mutually exclusive. They don't intersect each other. So we've got 0 divided by the probability of lunch, 65 over 100. OK, so there we go. We've got that probability, and that guy is going to just bust down to 0. OK, what's the probability of dinner? Well, the probability of dinner happens to be 0 over 100. All right, so because this is 0 over 100, this is an event where 0 equals 0, and those two events are independent from one another. So it is possible to have mutually exclusive events that are, in fact, independent. But what it requires is that like one of them have all zeros. Your question might be, why even include dinner in the contingency table? It's a good question. This is actually probably a poor example of where one would be. Uh, but sometimes, like when we're taking big polls and we want to include minority populations, like um, maybe Alaskan Inuits, and you want to actually show that, no, we didn't have any in our study, sometimes you do include this row with a bunch of zeros in it. And when that happens, it is possible to have events that are mutually exclusive that are also uh, independent from one another. But by and large, mutually exclusive events are dependent events. And if you are confused about like what actually is the right answer, always just go back and check the math. Check to see if the conditional probability A given B equals the probability of A. If it does, you have independent events. If it does not, your events are dependent.